up, what up? Welcome to another special edition of the Cool Report podcast. Today we have a uh, highly recommended by our staff, creator, uh, entrepreneur, uh, environmental scientist, Brittany Dadman. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. How are you today? Doing pretty good. Nice, almost spring. So, well, it's supposed to be spring. Right. So, right. yeah. They keep really fooling excited. us. We got sun <laughs> and 61 yeah. day, and now we got, you know, we got 45 degrees out there today. Right. But um, I just wanted to jump right into it with you. Um, uh, going, doing a little bit on your background. Just wanted to go straight into the environmental science part. Mm -hmm. um, when thinking of uh, environmental uh, consciousness, uh, what's the best way to approach uh, sustainability from your perspective? From my perspective, especially on an individual level, just remembering that we're stewards of the earth. We're mm -hmm. here to you know, take care of it and your actions should be mindful of that. I like so that. I know like we're all at different levels, like we can only do what we can afford, right. but keeping that in mind um, is key and remembering that to maintain balance, we need to be good stewards of the earth. So. Okay, so with, um, with that perspective, what inspired you uh, to take the entrepreneurial approach um, with environmental sustainability? Yeah, so um, it's very interesting. So my research background is more in the applied sciences. So mm -hmm. it's understanding how, uh, you know, the problems, like we study the problems all the time in academia, but uh, I really like to focus on you know, what the solutions are, are the solutions working? And so that's kind of more applied science. Mm -hmm. And so it was a natural transition to me, especially um, because, you know, my family are entrepreneurs. So I really wanted to basically merge both where, you know, I have the science background, but also using science to inform solutions. Right. And so that's uh, pretty much what we're doing at Ecosphere Organics. Okay, so tell us a little bit more, um, you know, about the business. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it and how long you've been in the industry itself? Yeah, so I've been an environmental scientist like in the industry, graduate school, working for over 10 years. Mm. And um, the business, uh, particularly Ecosphere Organics, is focused on scaling the use of sustainable raw materials in eco friendly products. So um, that's things that you think about biodegradable packaging or vegan leather. Mm -hmm. We really don't have the infrastructure here in the U.S. where entrepreneurs that want to be uh, more sustainable have a source mm -hmm. for their raw materials, for their, you know, lo any logistical issues or concerns um, that arise from sourcing those raw materials. Uh, there's really no place in the U.S. for that, and so right. that's what we're working towards. So we take things like organic waste and food waste and convert that into high-value raw materials, but also developing the technologies in the industry to help with, you know, ease of conversion, right. um, making sure that the process is sustainable. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we do. And, yeah, I've been in this space since 2023. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've just been enjoying it and learning every right. step of the way. Right, cool. That's because that kind of led into my next question was, um, I guess what would be some insight on uh, different approaches that, you know, whether it be small businesses or design studios, fashion designers and creators, um, you know, what are the different ways that they can just start to incorporate on a simple level um, sustainable practices throughout their business? Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of this is um, being mindful and learning about what you're currently doing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a part of my skill set as well. It's like looking at the process of everything and seeing like, oh, where is pollution being generated? Right. Where is waste being generated? Right. Um, so I think if people are mindful about what they're doing, um, then you can start figuring out the solutions. And so with uh, artists and designers, where Ecosphere comes in is being able to provide something that is sustainable and safe for them to use. So. Mm -hmm. One example is um, we hosted an event for our month of design last year, which was called Waste to Wonder. Um, we hosted that at New Lab. And throughout the summer leading up to that event, um, we basically converted food waste into art mediums and pigments. Mm -hmm. And we gave them to the artists to make, they made these gorgeous art pieces right. that were on display. And so what a lot of people don't understand is like traditional art materials and mediums, um, will come from harmful uh, polymers or like plastics mm -hmm. and then also harmful metals. Okay. 
And uh, that was also my background in research is studying the harmful impacts of metals. So mm. being able to supply a pigment that's an alternative yeah. to harmful metals was, I think, really cool. And we yeah. were able to see like how the artists were making like art pieces that um, were the equivalent of what they could use if they were using, you know, the harmful mm. or traditional materials. All right. So what are, um, you know, going back to the, uh, to the art example, what are some of the examples of um, I guess finished products that were uh, presented, or what is you know an example of a finished product from uh, waste? Yeah, so from the art perspective, um, we had a variety of artists. So some did oil painting, some did sculptures, mm. um, some did traditional watercolor. Uh, so it was kind of we left it up to them, so it'd mm. be as creative, and innovative possible. Okay. Um, from the design perspective, we have. We can create like sheets of materials that are alternative to like a vegan leather or traditional leather. And uh, yeah, so we're working with, you know, designers on that. And this year's uh, month of design event will actually be a little bit more focused on incorporating designers, like actual product designers mm -hmm. um, to use those materials. Um, and whether it's like they're making a bag or All a right. phone case or something like that. All right. Okay, cool. So. Um I've seen and I hear that you do a lot in Detroit, uh, working with a lot of organizations and, and groups in the city. Um, I kind of, is a question that I ask everybody that comes through, is um, what role does the city of Detroit, whether it's just as a backdrop or a resource in itself, what role has the city of Detroit played in um, the development of your creativity throughout your, your journey, your professional journey? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, being born and raised in Detroit and then having like, family that uh, like I was always active in mm -hmm. some portion of the scene where there is house music or right. the art scene. Oh, um, right. So Detroit is extremely pivotal for me when it came to like how I think creatively, um, how I look at other people as well. So mm -hmm. thinking like we're not just this, you know, uniform person that just has a nine to five, like right. in Detroit, you can usually find people that have their nine to five, but also DJ or, right. you know, do right. a lot of other stuff. So Definitely. that's what I love about Detroit. And for me, um, incorporating sort of creativity and being able to maintain that, um, just making sure that I'm still in those spaces mm -hmm. that I enjoy. Like right. if, you know, I, I can, you know, I've learned how to DJ here. Mm -hmm. I learned how to, yeah draw here like I learned a lot of stuff and I definitely like to incorporate that so even in my research um, and why I like more of the applied sciences is because you can be more creative with the design of an experiment and um, that I was able to keep you know creativity that way but also um, thinking about ecosphere uh, you know our first project was the art piece of this so creating the pigments and art mediums and mm -hmm. so uh yeah i just i love it and i want to maintain it and detroit uh is the place for creation and so right. i love it that's dope that's dope i, I like that you still kind of stay in tune yeah you know, go back and tap in with, with what's going on because there's so many different um you know creative avenues and little pockets of just genius yeah you know, around the city and you'd be surprised you know just what what can inspire you just from, you know, whether it be simple interactions or conversations with, you know, I'd I say Detroiters are peculiar individuals. And, and yeah, for sure. It's, it's, you can bump into some, some really uh, eclectic and uh, just genius conversations and inspiration around here. Yeah. And one thing I would say to that is like, um, like I lived other places and there's really... I know it's cliche, but there's really like no place it's like no, Detroit. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's really I no place. That all the time, and they just look at me like I'm crazy, but Detroit is a special Yeah, place. it's really yeah. special. Like, yeah, you really have to come here and like appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah, it's, um, and what I like is like, we're not very, we're not as siloed as some of the other uh, places I live where, you know, like we were talking, you know, people do like their job and then mm. go home and then that's right. pretty much right. it. <laughs> yeah, we have all these different pockets and there's so many different collectives and communities uh, and, you know, people willing to share. And you can really make, Detroit, you can really, you know, decide what you want to do here in Detroit right. and be truly creative. Right. That's cool. That's cool. I'm glad I'm not by myself <laughs> with, with the idea of Detroit. Um, so kind of still within uh, the creativity aspect, uh, how do you incorporate 
um, you know, your personal style or personal creativity uh, in your lifestyle and business without compromising the integrity of um, your environmental or sustainability practices. Yeah, for sure. Um, it goes back to being mindful about um, sort of what I'm doing and all of my hobbies and all the other stuff right. that I do. Um, and uh, as far as, uh, yeah, maintaining my personal creativity, just taking that time out to focus on myself mm -hmm. and like really what I want to do um, and explore different avenues of right you know, the creative side of my brain. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just like to maintain that time for me and where like, I really get to sit with myself and, you know, play. I think that's really important, just yeah. people playing. And Let your mind wander and mm -hmm. have fun. Yeah, daydream, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess another question uh, on your, your creativity or inspirational side, um, how does traveling inspire you? And what do you look for mm -hmm. Um, in your travels, you know, for inspiration? Yeah, definitely, um, especially traveling, I think it's always good to go off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to go to little shops and sometimes, um, even if I don't know the language, I like to purchase like a book in another language. Yeah. Um, I really like to get out there. Um, and so traveling really just gives you a totally different perspective um, on life, it reminds you that, you know, you don't have to take life too seriously. Right. Like, you know, everything will work out. What's meant to be will be. And um, seeing like how other people live in other countries or even other parts of the US, mm -hmm. like we're very diverse here. Right. Um, so yeah, it just gives you a totally new perspective. So I love it. Right. Mm -hmm. So with, um, you know, everything that you have going on, um, as busy as you can get, or as you know, hectic as your schedule can get, um, what does a perfect day you know, if you just had a chance to curate, your, <laughs> you know, your perfect day, say, this is what I get to do when I get my day for me. Um, what does a, you know, a perfect day look like for you? Um, a perfect day looks like, you know, it's nice and sunny outside and the sunlight is coming into the home and I'm just sitting by the window with my cats and meditating, journaling, um, yeah, listening to some music. Yeah, I feel like that's the perfect day for me mm -hmm. just because yeah i am like always ripping and running right. <laughs> so <laughs> having some time just to let my brain relax especially being in a career field that where i have to utilize my brain yeah. quite a lot so um having that time to just rest yeah, yeah. that's cool we always talk about rest and recovery mm -hmm. um just taking that time for yourself um if there's just i guess from your professional um, journey, if there's one tip you could share for um, practicing or being more mindful of, you know, the environment and, and being a steward, what would be, I guess, a quick tip or one thing that you would share? Say, hey, incorporate this in your daily activities to be more conscious about the planet. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say getting out in nature is key. So, mm -hmm. like, you really need to build your connection. I think what society has done, particularly to uh, African Americans, is disconnected us mm -hmm. from nature um, because we see other people there that are quote unquote scary or whatever, mm -hmm. and then we just avoid it completely. And so um, I think it's really important for people to actually get into nature. I like to say touch grass right. and <laughs> um, yeah. really listen to the sounds, like just, I guess kind of almost meditate in nature. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to like, of course, like sit down on the grass or anything. Right. You just like go for a walk. Right. And I think uh, building that relationship, uh, being able to identify all the sounds, like there's mm -hmm. so much um, just because we're disconnected from nature that we're not able to identify with just our ears or right. yeah, or just sensing some things around. So I think, yeah, having that connection Being is key. Being in tune with it. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. So what's, um, what's next for yourself and what's next for your business? Yeah, for myself, it's definitely focusing on the business. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, trying to, like, we're in that phase where we're looking to be able to scale um, to meet the demand of, like, clients and things like that. So we're mm -hmm. looking for, like, uh, 
space where you can take on a larger capacity. We're looking for, of course, manufacturing partners. So that's kind of the next step is to really uh, kind of scale like uh, our business operations, but also uh, the types of clients we can take on, like larger nice. um, clients. So yeah. Cool. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the developments of the brand. Oh, thank um, you. So the last questions, where can we find out more about what you got going on? Where can people follow you on social medias and websites? Yeah, for sure. Um, EcosphereOrganics.com. You'll find the Instagram, LinkedIn, Ecosphere Organics everywhere. So, yeah, d definitely follow and. All right, cool. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the wrap. Um, it was a pleasure talking with you. Hopefully, we get a chance to sit down and talk again. Yeah, for sure. Right. That's a wrap. <laughs> cool. <All right. laughs>